this particular event, the crowd witnessed an evening of racing history. Grand National Champion Kenny Roberts rolled onto the track with a 130 horsepower, four-cylinder road racing engine packed into a dirt track frame. The bike had never been run in competition before, and no one, not even Roberts, knew what it could do. Roberts started the race as the slowest qualifier at the back of the grid, and yet despite that, still managed to work his way up to fourth place with the leaders directly in reach. As if Roberts, wearing that conspicuous number one, didn't have enough to worry about hanging onto his new bike, he also had to contend with a Harley wrecking crew made up of Rex Bochamp, Corky Keener, and Jay Springsteen, also known as the Michigan Mafia. All night long, the Harley wrecking crew of Bochamp, Keener, and Springsteen swapped first, second, and third back and forth as if there were no one else on the track. I should have not been riding where I was riding. I was riding next to the hay bales. A couple of times clipped a couple of hay bales with a thing, and uh, that was kind of past the limit. I don't know how many times I can do that, you know, and get away with it, but that particular race I did ride past the limit. The tire at the last five laps were chunked out. There was no tire left. To get the drive that I got on that last lap was uh, something that, I don't know if it was past the limit that brought that thing to first place coming down that front straight or if it was some help up above because uh, I didn't really expect to be there. I was 25 yards from them guys going onto the back straightaway. Of course, they were fooling around too. They didn't know that I was there. And, uh, when they heard it, it was too late. In the last quarter mile, Roberts blew the wrecking crew away with sheer horsepower and nerve. With one hand on the checkered flag and one hand on the throttle, Roberts popped a wheelie all the way down the back straight. Racing authorities reacted to Roberts' victory by banning his bike. Apparently, they didn't like the idea that he could take it to limits no one else had even dreamed of. I feel that I cannot be beat. Uh, I feel like I can take it to the limit, their limit, and go past it to beat them. Not only was Roberts a two-time flat track national champion, he's also the first American to win two 500cc road racing world championships. I like going to a racetrack like this, like the ones in Europe. Uphill, downhill, turn right and turn left, off cambered corners. Something I can go slow, but yet go fast. Kind of hard to understand unless you're racing motorcycles. It's really hard to come out high, high, right, right along the hay bales. Most people won't do that. The fast corners are the ones I like the most. In a race, I can make up, oh, say a second, second and a half, and then I can coast. So in a 100-mile race, I know exactly where I got to go and how fast I got to do it. Going through a corner like this, that's, that's a slow corner. I can, if I ride really hard, right on the limit, I can make up uh, maybe a tenth of a second. You take it to the limit when both wheels are sliding around and uh, you can't go no faster. It's just like splitting a hair on a frog's back with an ax. Uh, you have to be pretty careful. When I can go past where both wheels are sliding around and come back to it, that's my limit. I think it's fear that keeps you from going past your limit. It's got to be because racing is uh, surrounded with fear. 
your buddies are getting killed. It's something that, that, that happens and, and you're all aware of it. It's just like driving a car or flying an airplane and the uh, airplane goes down with your buddy on it. Uh, you're not just going to stop flying or you're not going to stop driving your car. It's something that I've done and I do for a living. I get paid to do it. Uh, it's been my whole life. I was taught by Kel Carruthers to go fast around fast corners and slow around slow corners. And it's really paid off. It saves wear and tear on my tires. Most people won't do that. They won't take it to the actual limit on a fast corner. That's the advantage I have in racing motorcycles, especially on this track where it's fast, but yet it's slow. That's the kind I like. This style of racing was pioneered by Roberts. He leans so far off the bike, his knees drag along the asphalt at incredible speeds. In addition to his leathers, he protects himself with heavy-duty tape. While several of the top pros make $500,000 a year, Kenny Roberts' special style and determination will earn him in excess of $1 million this year. I don't think that everybody can do it. I think there's much more excitement and much more thrilling than, than any car built. For a car racer that, that just slides off the racetrack and spins out, it ain't that way in motorcycle racing. I think that, that one of the things about riding a motorcycle to its limit is that, that the car, if you spin out in a car, you either hit the fence or you spin out. If you make a mistake in one of these fire breathing rocket ships that we're riding, baby, you, you fall off. And you fall off hard, you don't really get up that fast. Motorcycle racing is definitely not easy, but I wouldn't trade it for anything else in the world. <laughs>